The Death Corps of Krieg are probably among my favourite factions in 40k. Their grim, historically inspired aesthetic perfectly encapsulates what it means to be a regular human soldier in the 41st millennium. But collecting these awesome looking miniatures does come at a price. A regular 10-man infantry squad will set you back £46 or $72 for my team microwaving cousins across the Atlantic. But there is an alternative. I'm Pete the Wargamer and today I'll be showing you how you can kitbash 30 Death Corps of Krieg miniatures for the price of 10 from Forge World. The crux of my conversion lay in two kits from Wargames Atlantic. The first was the World War I Late War German Infantry set, which in itself is a really nice kit and, if I'm not mistaken, is also the first fully plastic World War I kit at this scale. Either way, it's a fantastic set if you have any interest in this period of history. The other half of the conversion was built from the Le Grognard set. Regular viewers of my channel will already be familiar with this kit, as I used it in my previous Vostruins conversion guide. So this set already came with some good credentials. The great thing about these kits is that one represents early 20th century German uniforms, and the other is inspired by French uniforms of the same time period. Precisely the mixture of influences that the Death Corps of Krieg design has tapped into. Additionally, both of these sets contain enough parts to build 30 figures each and are priced at £25 or $32. As you need a set of each, you're looking at £50 or $64 for all the parts you need, which will allow you to build 30 Death Corps of Krieg infantrymen. Whenever I'm doing this kind of conversion, the first thing that I like to do is to remove all the components from the sprue that I think I'll have a need for. This means I can play around with some dry fitting and see how the parts interact with each other. For the Le Grognard set, I started by removing a torso, a rifle arm, and one of the backpacks as well. Similarly, for the German infantry, I removed a pair of the rifle arms, a gas mask head, and some of the equipment. Speaking of heads, this set comes with a huge array of heads. Each of the 30 men in the set have four heads, each in a different style, meaning that you'll be left with about 90 spare heads to bulk out your bits box with, even after building the 30 of these guys. The first area that I wanted to try and get right was the rifle. 40k miniatures are sculpted in what is commonly referred to as heroic scale. This means that some features are slightly larger or exaggerated than their scale would suggest. These things usually include hands, feet, heads and weapons. Luckily, Forge World tends to lean more towards a true scale which helped as I was using the more true scale German infantry components here. I decided to use the German infantry arms for this conversion, as these seem to match the DKK more closely than the Grognard's arms did. However, I needed to tech up the distinctly late 19th century weapon. First, I needed to make space for these more futuristic attachments by clipping away the muzzle and the bayonet, as well as carefully cutting away the straps that hung beneath the rifle. As a word of warning, this component is very fragile, especially if you're used to working with the chunkier last gun. So take your time and use a sharp knife here. So at this point, I needed a few extra parts in which to bulk out the Gewehr, and as I was trying to keep the components that I used within these two kits, I ended up cannibalizing the Grognard's rifle. I started by chopping off the muzzle. However, it was still much too big to attach yet, so the bayonet needed to go. It still felt a little too chunky, so I continued to make cuts until I was finally left with a small nub, which was glued to the end of the Gewehr. The next step was a little easier, and saw me using a knife to slice off the magazine from the Grognard rifle, filing the top of it, and then attaching it beneath the Gewehr, just in front of the trigger guard. You can see now why I decided to remove the strap earlier on, as it would have prevented us from adding on this magazine. With the rifle brought up to date, I went ahead and glued it to the body. Either by complete luck or clever design on behalf of Wargames Atlantic, the arms fit perfectly against the Grognard torso. And with that, the hardest part of the conversion is completed. It's the most fiddly and the most involved of the whole conversion, so if you can get through this, it's all plain sailing from here on out. So at this stage, I had my body and rifle, and we can already see that death core creakiness showing through especially with the pinned back greatcoat and chunky cuffs of the arms. But no self-respecting Kriegsman would be caught dead without his gas mask. Although, 
due to the hazardous conditions that these guys fight in, they likely would end up dead without a gas mask and very quickly indeed. Anyway, the German infantry kit comes with gas mask Stahlhelm's heads, which provided me with a good approximation of Krieg headgear. The DKK helmets are slightly different, being a combination of French Adrian helmets and the German Stahlhelm's, but the heads we have here are close enough for our purposes. Fitting them to the torsos was pretty straightforward, although straight off the sprue they didn't fit perfectly. I needed to make a slight trim to the underside of the gas mask filter and also to the side straps as well. However, once these adjustments have been completed, the head could be glued into place on the torso. The death core of Krieg miniatures feature packs that are topped with bed rolls. Luckily for me, the Grognog kit came with a backpack that was a really close approximation to this. As this part was designed for the torso that I was already using, it attached with no problems. By this point, I had a perfectly usable death core of Krieg proxy, but I still had a bunch of extra equipment that I've taken from the German infantry kit. These consisted of ammo pouches, grenades, and the close combat weapon of choice for the DKK, the entrenching tool. These were added to the model with no extra cutting or filing required and sat quite nicely at the back of the miniature, hanging from the belt. And with that, I was done. The miniature had been built and all it needed was a 28mm base and a paint job, which left me with this. Now I have filmed guides for how I painted and based this guy and those will be available shortly, or if you're watching this in the future, then hopefully they're already available. But now that we have everything painted up to a suitable scheme, we can see how everything has been pulled together. And honestly, I'm really happy with how this one came out. With these kinds of third party conversions, there is usually some sort of compromise needed. But these guys are quite easily identifiable as being Kriegsmen. However, as pleased as I am with this, I wanted to see if I could build something that was a little more imperial looking, which is what resulted in this. This model, for the most part, was built exactly the same as the one that I've already showcased. However, instead of using parts from the Grognox kit to expand out the tech on the rifle, I instead used parts from a last gun. I think the result is a little more pleasing to the eye, and more closely resembles the Lucius Patton last gun. In addition to this, I also used some equipment from the Cadence kit instead of those German infantry set. This provided me with the ever important Aquila and also something that helped to tie this model into the 40k universe. However, the addition of all these components to all 30 of your Kriegsmen would significantly impact the price. Having to buy all those separate last guns and pouches would soon add up over those 30 miniatures. But if you're happy to just use the parts from the kits, then you can easily stay within budget. So let's finish off with some nice spinning shots of these guys. And that brings us to the end of another conversion guide. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed the challenge of actually building these guys. As I already mentioned, the kits that I used here are from Wargames Atlantic and I'll include those links in the description below. I also wanted to give a quick mention to the Great War channel. If you've not heard of those guys, they did a week by week account of World War I. They first started in 2014 and continued right up until the end of the war, recounting events that happened exactly 100 years ago. It's just something I like to have on the background as I'm working. It's interesting, informative, and is also a good source of inspiration for when I'm working on these kinds of videos. So if you're into history, then check them out. Big thank you to all my Patreon supporters and the folks who use my affiliates links. Your help is always greatly appreciated. If you like this video, then check out my other conversion guides and also consider subscribing. And with all that, what I'd like to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.